Hey everybody, welcome to part six of the Exponent Rules series of videos. And uh, where we left off in part five is this problem here, okay? Using the power rules. So I'm going to expect that you all tried this problem already, all right? You did your best and you wanna see if your answer is right. So let's get right into it. So we have the outside exponent, 2, okay, which is being multiplied by all the exponents inside the parentheses, all right? And notice again, the parentheses is only around the top of the fraction bar, not around the entire fraction. Therefore, the exponent only ex uh, distributes to the top exponents, and it does not affect the bottom exponents at all. So let's do that. So 2 times... We have two times five here, which makes it a to the what? Okay, very good. Someone said a to the 10th. Okay. Now, and here we have two times one, which is of course two. However, there might be some confusion at this point. The question is, does this become negative four to the second power without parentheses or negative four to the second power with parentheses, okay? It's a very important question for us to answer. So let's take a look at, um, let's work this out, this part out, off on the side. Because as I always say, when in doubt, work it out. So I'm gonna take the numerator and I'm gonna, this whole numerator, I'm gonna rewrite it off on the side. Okay, so watch me, I'm gonna write here negative 4 a to the fifth power okay and put parentheses around it and put it to the second power now i'm going to show you guys something there's another way to work out this problem and that's why in math it's always good to know more than one way to solve a math problem so that you can check your answer i can take this entire thing in parentheses and just rewrite it twice okay let me show you that again i can take this entire thing and rewrite it twice because the exponent tells me multiply the base by itself two times well what's the base in this situation it's this entire thing okay it's this entire thing this entire thing so in other words look here i'm gonna write negative four a to the fifth power in parentheses once, and then I'm gonna write it again. Let me zoom in there so you can really see it. Okay, see that? So I want you guys to understand something. This is no different than if I said, watch. This and this are essentially the same. Now, the only difference is that in this situation, I have negative four and next to it, I have a to the fifth, right? But even if it was just negative four by itself squared, you all know that when there's parentheses around a negative number and there's an exponent, you already know that that's negative four times negative four, right? With the parentheses around the negative, I keep the negative for every time I write the base, right? If there were no parentheses at all, you already know that if it was negative four squared, watch this, with no parentheses, that can be written this way, okay? Only one of them keeps the negative, the other one doesn't. But as long as you see parentheses, it doesn't matter if it's just around the negative four alone or if it's around, you know, a negative four as a coefficient with variable terms behind it. It doesn't matter. Once you see those parentheses, you know the negative is attached to every single time you write that base. And in this case, the base is more than just a coefficient or a number. It's a coefficient and a variable with an exponent, and it could even be longer than this. It could be negative four a to the fifth, b to the sixth, c to the eighth. Doesn't matter. 
I keep all of it because it's all in parentheses, raised to the second power, and I multiply it by itself. So now look what happens, right? We already know this part. What happens is, okay, negative 4 times negative 4, I multiply the coefficients. I get what? Remember, negative times a negative is a positive. Very good. And now I apply the product rule, correct? I have matching variables. I keep the matching variables. And because I'm multiplying, I do what to the exponents? I add them. Yes, 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay? So what I'm showing you is, I, instead of distribution, I took this and I just said, okay, well, I'm going to multiply this entire thing by itself twice. So I wrote it two times and I applied the product rule, which we already learned right? Negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16, 8 to the 5th times 8 to the 5th is 8 to the 10th because I add the exponents. 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay, so coming back here, I just wanted to make clear that if I use this method, distributing the exponent on the outside to the exponents on the inside, this, here's the point that I want to make. This, when I say negative 4 to the, and I multiply 2 times 1 and I get 2, this will not be this. All right? Negative 4 to the second power with no parentheses around it, which is negative 4 times positive 4. No, it would be this. That's what I want to make clear. Okay? I want to make clear that these parentheses around the negative 4, which tells me keep the negative for every single time I write the 4, is the same thing that's happening here. Don't be confused by the fact that the parentheses in this case is not around the negative 4 by itself, that there's other stuff inside the parentheses with the negative 4. No. Okay. You could actually, to make it less confusing for you, even if you see, you know, like a long variable term, what you are allowed to do, okay, is we can take this negative four and then just kind of like put an extra set of parentheses here to make it very clear that when I distribute that two to the one, it's going to be negative 4 with parentheses around it to the second power. Okay? So, if that makes it less confusing for you, do it. Okay? And you, this is the, um, the only time you need to do that is if you see a negative, right? If there was no negative here, then it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. But because there's a negative here, negative 4, okay, my coefficient is negative. I need to know very clearly that when, that when I distribute that exponent to the invisible 1, that this becomes this. Negative 4 with parentheses around it still to the second power. Because then I know I'm multiplying a negative 4 times a negative 4, not a negative 4 times a positive 4. All right, I want to make that very clear to all of you. All right, let's keep the fraction bar and the bottom stays the same. Okay, and again, it stays the same because these parentheses, I want to say for the last time, these parentheses is not around the entire fraction. The parentheses are not around the entire fraction. It's just around the numerator. Okay, the parentheses is just around the numerator, not around the entire fraction. So therefore, I do not distribute the exponent to the bottom, just the top. And therefore, I keep the bottom the same. All right, now let's continue. So we're going to, let me just kind of rewrite it underneath. We um, have negative four in parentheses to the second power. I have a question, okay? Do I drop this to the bottom of the fraction bar because the 4 is negative? Yes or no? Okay. Someone said, yes, Mr. B, because you want the negative to be positive. 
And when you cross the line, you change the sign. Is that right? Okay, someone else is saying no, Mr. Barbier, because you only need to do that when the exponent is negative, not when the base is negative. That is correct. We are not going to cross the line and change the sign here. No. Look at the exponent, two. It's positive. So I don't need to do anything. I don't need to move this down because I'm changing the exponent to a, you know, from negative to positive. It's already positive. It's the base that's negative. So don't get that confused, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm going to do very simply is I'm just going to evaluate this negative four to the second power. But wait a minute. We already did that, didn't we? We kind of did it up here, right? Negative four to the second power is negative four times negative four, which is what someone, which is positive 16. Yes, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So coming back here, I know my answer here is positive 16. Okay. I keep the A to the 10th. I keep the fraction bar. I keep the seven B to the third. Now, a couple of questions I have for you. Does seven go into 16 evenly? Okay, no, it does not, right? Now, if the seven were an eight, different story. Now you can say, okay, eight goes into 16 twice, but it's not an eight, it's a seven. So you might see Mr. Barbie, what do we do? Leave it alone, okay? We leave the coefficients alone. One more question. Can I say 10 minus three, seven? Okay, someone just said no, Mr. B, because the bases don't match. They have to be the same variable, correct? This is A, this is a B. So because the bases are not the same, I cannot subtract the exponents. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the answer. Okay, we're done. There's nothing, else, there's nothing more that we can do. Okay, very good. All right, let's continue. Here's number nine. Now, if you are feeling, you know, uh, confident, try it. Okay, try it yourself, give it a shot, pause the video, and go for it. I encourage you to. Okay, I'm going to expect at this time that people have unpaused their video and tried it, right? You don't mind whether you got the answer wrong, whether you got the answer right, that doesn't matter to you. Trying is how you learn, yes? So make sure you try, even if it's wrong, it doesn't matter, okay? You gave it a shot. All right, let's go. My question to all of you now is this. Do I say, okay, negative five times two, multiply the coefficients first, negative 10. Is that my first step? Some of you are thinking, yeah, is that the first step? That's what I did. But my question is, look again and see if there's something we must do first before we can multiply the negative five times the positive two. All right, someone said, wait a minute, Mr. Barbier, you have an exponent right here. Do I need to do something with the exponent first? The answer is yes, you do, right? Remember, the rule of PEMDAS, order of operations, says that exponents come before multiplication. Exponents is step two. Multiplication, along with division, is step three. We cannot multiply negative five and two first if there's an exponent here. No, we must apply the exponent first. That is our number one responsibility. Some of you might say, well, but can I just multiply first and do the exponent later? No, you cannot. Okay, you must uh, take care of the exponent first before we multiply. Order of operations still applies, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, in math, the rules never change. So you learned PEMDAS a long time ago. It still applies today with this situation with this problem so let's distribute right now let me ask you again do we go right or do we go left okay we're going left with the exponent first you should do what put your invisible ones right i see why it doesn't have an exponent i'm going to give it an invisible one and don't forget i see negative five needs an invisible one also but like we just covered in the previous problem 
I see a negative. So just so that I don't get confused, I'm going to do this. Okay. Once you see that negative sign, put the parentheses so that you know that when we distribute that two, let's do it now, two times negative one, we know that it's negative five parentheses around it to the second power, okay? With the parentheses around it, very important. Let's continue distributing, okay? Okay, got it, right? Let's go. So we have two times one, which gives me, let me zoom out a little bit which gives me negative five with parentheses around it. Don't forget those parentheses to the what power? Second power, very good, right? And now we have two times four, which gives me X to the, okay, very good, eighth power. Remember the uh, with the power rule, we are multiplying, we're not adding. 2 times 1 gives me y to the second power, good. And 2 times 2 gives me z to the fourth power. All right, very good. Now again, question, do I distribute this exponent to the right? No, I do not. So what do we do? We basically keep the right side the same. Now, folks, I can still put parentheses around this entire thing here. As a matter of fact, you might say, well, Mr. B, I already have parentheses here. What can I do? If you want to use brackets, you can. All right? If the, if the double parentheses confuses you, we can. Okay, we can use brackets. All right? Or we can just make a larger set of parentheses. So however you want to do it is fine. Okay? All right? You might say, Mr. B, it looks a little weird to have brackets next to parentheses. Maybe, but it's essentially the same thing. Okay. And now, now that I'm done distributing and I rewrote the problem, let's just focus on this side. Okay. So let's do it. What do we do now? You might see Mr. Barbier, can I just... Again, negative 5 times 2. Okay, good. I'm glad you were listening. We have to evaluate that exponent first. Okay, we have to evaluate this exponent first. We cannot just go negative 5 times 2. Exponents come before multiplication, yes? So let's work that out off on the side. What is negative 5 with parentheses around it to the second power look like when I expand it? Okay, very good. That's negative 5 times negative 5, right? Yes? Which is... Okay, someone just said positive 25. Very good. Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So, coming back here. This gives me positive 25. All right, and let me just keep everything else the same for now. Okay, and now that we have those inner parentheses gone, we can go back to standard parentheses. Okay, there we go. Let's continue. One last row to do. Now that the exponent has been evaluated, all right, and we have no exponent by the coefficient, now we can multiply the coefficients, okay? Because the exponent by the coefficient has been taken care of, all right? So let's do that. 25 times 2. Multiply the coefficients. 2 quarters, ladies and gentlemen, is how much? Okay, someone just said 50 cents. Very good. I just did that mentally. And now let's multiply the variables uh, that match, right? x to the eighth times x to the third. What do we do to the exponents? 
we add them, correct? Please don't multiply in this case. Remember, you only multiply when you have a exponent outside of parentheses. Like imagine that three were here outside. Of, now I go three times eight, 24. I'm not distributing an exponent. I'm multiplying a matching variable x to the eighth times x to the third, which means I add the exponents. So what's very important in terms is that you don't get the rules confused. You know when to multiply exponents and you know when to add exponents. In this case, we're adding. 8 plus 3 is 11. Very good. Okay, let's continue with the y's. Let's go in alphabetical order. y squared times y to the sixth is y to the what? Remember again, add the exponents. 2 plus 6 is 8. Very good. And let's look at this. We have, hold on, it's eight. we have z to the fourth and no z over here. So what do we do? We just keep the z to the fourth. And ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at the answer. That's it. Finito. Done. Okay. Done. All right. One last problem. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all pros at this. Pause the video, give it a shot. Go. Okay, I'm assuming you've tried it, you've unpaused the video, you're ready to see if your answer is correct. Let's see. Okay, what do I do first? Okay, you tell me, you're the teacher. Okay, Mr. Bravia, you're going to put the invisible ones. Where? by the eight and by the Z on the bottom. Okay, my question to you is, are we distributing the two to just the top or the top and the bottom in this case? Okay, so I'm just say, Mr. Barbier, in this case, we're distributing to top and bottom because the parentheses is around the entire fraction. Very good. Distribute top, okay, and bottom. Because the parentheses, notice, ladies and gentlemen, goes all around the fraction. It wraps the entire fraction. Okay, let's continue. So we have 8 to the what power? We're, oops, sorry. We're multiplying 2 times 1, right? Which is 8 to the second. Very good. Also known as 8 squared. Then we have x to the what? x to the 14th, very good. Draw the fraction bar. We have y to the what? Okay, someone just said y to the negative sixth. And we have z to the what? z squared, very good. Okay, next step is let's, so we have options, ladies and gentlemen, in this case. We can evaluate the 8 to the second power first, just get it out the way, especially because the exponent is positive. So we don't have to worry about, you know, remember, we couldn't evaluate this if, there was, if this was 8 to the negative second power. We'd have to make the negative a positive first. But because that exponent is already positive, there's no need to make it negative because it's already positive. I'm sorry, make it positive because it's already positive. So we can just say, you know, evaluate that now and get it out the way. So let's do it. So 8 squared is what? 16? Is that correct? Okay, see what I just did? I was trying to see who was paying attention. It is not 16. What is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's 8 times 8, which is 64. Very good. Okay, be careful about making careless mistakes in math. So now I'm going to just keep the x to the 14th power. All right. And before I keep writing, you know what? Let's try to make this even simpler for us. We're going from coefficient to the variables in alphabetical order, yes? So 8 squared is 64. Now, x to the 14th, the 14th is already positive, so I keep it. But let's go from x to y. Notice y has a power of negative 6. Let's just take care of this right now. Let's make that negative 6 a positive 6. How? Okay, someone just said, Mr. B, you're going to cross the line and change the sign. Move it from the bottom to the 
top. Very good. And what happens to the exponent? Okay, good. It becomes positive. All right? Cross the line and change the sign. Now, here's my question for you. Z to the second power. Am I going to move that up to the top also? Someone said, yes, Mr. B. So that the Z is not by itself on the bottom. Is that correct? Okay, no, no, because the exponent's already positive. If the exponent's already positive, no need for me to move it to the top, because if I move it to the top, I'm making the exponent negative, right? If I bring it to the top, it'll be Z to the negative second power. I don't want that. I want to keep it positive. So what do I do? Someone just said, Mr. Barbie, you're going to keep it on the bottom because the exponent is already positive. You are correct. And that is the final answer. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Okay. We are now masters of the power rule. Masters. You should feel very, very good about yourself. You should feel very confident that you can do this, all right? You are masters of this. So ladies and gentlemen, now you're just gonna take this knowledge, you're going to work on your homework sheet, all right? And you're going to do great. You're gonna do great, I have faith in you, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.